welcome to this short jog pod about using SEEP in GCSE geography. So the aim of this session is to back up, reinforce and develop your confidence in using SEEP throughout your exam answers and aiming to get those higher level marked answers in your GCSE exams. Now, SEEP is something that you have used in lessons quite a bit. But this job pod is aiming at reinforcing that information that you already know. So just a quick recap for you of what SEEP means. So we are looking at social impact, environmental impact, economic impact and political impact. Now, social impact is all about people and things that affect people. Environmental impacts are all about the landscape, nature and the environment and what affects those. Economic impacts, it's all about jobs and wealth. And political impacts is all about government and policy and decision making. Now, you should be aiming to use these wherever you can. However, there is some basic principles to think about. When we talk about social, economic and environmental impacts, these are really must be used in exam answers where students are aiming for target grades and achieving grades of a six or more. OK, even if you are aiming for a four, it's always good to use social, economic and environmental impacts because that just helps level up your answer. It helps show the examiner that you understand the different types of impacts that you can have within geography. However, political is something that is a bit more difficult to discuss and therefore anybody who's aiming for an eight or a nine really should be using political impacts as well. Now, that does not mean that if you are aiming for a four, you shouldn't use political. You absolutely should try and use political wherever you can as well. Again, it will level up your answer. But people who particularly are aiming for an eight or a nine in their GCSE geography must be trying to use political impacts where it applies. So let's first start off by talking about each of these categories and what types of things are involved in these categories. So let's take social to start with. Now, when we talk about social impacts and social characteristics, we're looking about how it impacts people. So we're thinking about education and the education of people, the quality of life that people lead, the communities they live in, we're looking at whether people are happy or not, so happiness scales. We're looking at safety and people feeling safe. We're looking at things like health and medicines and their impacts on people. And we're also thinking about people's cultural traits and we're also thinking about people's religion. So they're just some of the things that are involved in social impacts and social characteristics. Next, environmental. When we talk about environmental, we are talking about uh, the landscape and conditions on the landscape. So things like water quality, access to water, air quality and pollution, habitats for both plants and animals in ecosystems, soil quality with the ability to grow crops and plants. We're talking about green open spaces. Resources available to people to use, for example, oil, coal and gas. And we're talking about change of the environment and how it has changed. Now, for economic impacts and conditions, what we're talking about here really is wealth, money and jobs. So things like globalisation and how the world is more connected than it ever has been. We're looking at ACs and EDCs and LIDCs and those three different types of economically developed countries. We are talking about jobs and how jobs are impacted by changes in society. We are talking about money in terms of schools and doctors and education overall and healthcare overall. And we're talking about equality as well and whether everybody in a society has an equal share of wealth. And finally, then, political impacts and characteristics. So these impacts or characteristics are about government and politics and changes in government policy and decision making 
in government overall. So you might have rising political tensions within a nation, that's a political impact. We're talking also about democratic values and the difference between a democratic country who vote for their government and a dictatorship nation where there is a dictator in charge of that nation. We're also talking about who makes rules and where the rules are made and who they're decided by, as well as the direction that a council, a local council or a government takes in terms of policy. So they are a brief roundup of social, economic, environmental and political characteristics and impacts and the things we might analyse in relation to them. Now this time I'm going to relate those impacts to one of your case studies which is from weather hazards in the global hazard section and that was the Typhoon Haiyan case study in the Philippines in 2013. And remember, this is still to date the largest recorded typhoon in history. So let's look at the social impacts briefly of that typhoon. Well, there were more, more than 70,000 lives lost overall. 1.9 million people were left homeless. There were outbreaks of diseases such as cholera and typhoid. And there was also widespread looting. They are crimes like robbing shops taking place in the aftermath of the typhoon. So they are social impacts because they mainly impact on people. They are mainly to do with people's actions and what impacts on people. Now let's think about the environmental impacts of Typhoon Haiyan. So there are numerous, but these are just three main ones. First one is that flooding damaged homes and businesses. Now, the reason that's environmental is because we're talking mainly about the flooding here, okay? So there was a large scale flooding in the aftermath of the typhoon due to heavy rainfalls. Trees were uprooted and that led to carbon dioxide releasing. So we know that trees are a store of carbon dioxide. They actually take in the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. When the trees are uprooted, when they are removed from the land by the flooding, that releases the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And that obviously has impacts on climate change, for example. And the third one here, because of the flooding, we also had sewage and wastewater covering the streets of Taklaban, which is the capital of this area. Now, what that meant was that the environmental conditions in the area of Taklaban severely worsened and that actually links to the social impacts because that has a health impact on people as well. Now the economic impacts of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines where for example there was an estimated 5.8 billion US dollars worth of damage. That's a huge figure for the amount of damage caused and remember this was a very large typhoon Six million workers lost their jobs as a result of this typhoon and lost their source of income. For example, you can imagine that agricultural workers, farmers, would have lost crops, would have lost use of their land, etc. And a third economic impact here is that one of the main exports of the Philippines is rice. So rice exporters in the Philippines lost out to trade opportunities, lost the ability to be able to trade their rice and therefore that enabled their income to go down as well. So they are the economic impacts of Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. And then finally, the political impacts and implications of Typhoon Haiyan in 2013 were as follows. There are three here. The first one was that the government of the Philippines had to declare a national state of emergency. And that means that all of the emergency services are put on warning that this is a large scale disaster and that we need to respond as quickly and as best we can. So the government had to actually legislate to say that this is a national state of emergency. The second political impact here is to do with the president of the Philippines at the time, which was President Aquino. And he was under great pressure by other political parties and by the pop general population to speed up aid supplies to the communities that needed them. So things like food, water and shelter were desperately needed because, as we know, 1.9 million people had lost their homes. 
clean water sources were unavailable at the time. So therefore, President Aquino was under immense political pressure, and this is a political impact, to sort out aid supplies as quickly as possible. And finally, the UN, which is the United Nations, and this is a worldwide or global scale cooperation between a number of nations to help nations with this type of problem. They have admitted since this typhoon that they were too slow to respond to the impacts of the typhoon. OK, so they were too slow in actually getting aid and food supplies and water supply, etc., to Tacloban and the surrounding areas. And this had an impact, therefore, on the ability of people to recover. So there are the political impacts of this case study. So hopefully that helps you overall with thinking about how we use SEEP and how they are directly related to impacts and responses. Now, when do you actually use SEEP? When do you need to use it in any topic, in any case study? Well, the answer to that really is wherever you can, wherever you can fit in social, environmental, economic or political, do. OK. However, saying that, SEEP will mostly be useful in your GCSE for your six mark questions, your eight mark questions and your 12 mark question on paper three specifically. OK, so six and eight marks in all three papers and then your 12 mark question on paper three. That is where you will find SEEP most useful. But you can also try to use SEEP in your three mark answers wherever you think it is relevant. Now, to look at an example in how we use SEEP, I'm going to run you through a sample GCSE question. And this question stated as follows. It said, case study, natural weather hazard event. Name of chosen natural weather hazard event. So in the space, you would have written the name of the event that you choose to write about. And remember, it says weather hazard, so we cannot write about tectonics here. And then we've got the question and the question is evaluate the impacts of your chosen natural weather hazard event. And that is worth six marks in this case. So the first thing we need to think about is planning your answer. How are you going to actually answer this question? We know that it's based on a case study. And therefore, we need to name a case study in the space provided. And that case study in this case is going to be Typhoon Haiyan. That was our study of a natural weather hazard event in the world. Then we need to think about what we're asked to do. So it says evaluate. Now evaluate simply means you have to come to a conclusion or a verdict after weighing up the different types of impacts and how severe they were. OK, so you're going to have some impacts which were very severe and very damaging and you're going to have other impacts which were minimal. And that might be because the responses reduce the impacts. So we've got to write an answer that basically allows us to say whether or not the impacts to Typhoon Haiyan were severe or not. And finally, we are asked about impact. So we need to remember that we can categorize our impacts into social, economic, environmental and political. OK, so this is a six mark question. So you're not going to fit in all of social, environmental, economic and political. So instead, what you do is you choose your strongest arguments here. So I'm going to choose some social ones and some economic ones in this case because it's six marks. I'm not also then going to do environmental and political because I'm not going to have enough space or time to answer it. Now, you could choose economic and political if you wanted to. That's up to you. You're going to need, because it's a case study, specific facts and figures. So, for example, instead of saying there were lots of deaths or there was lots of destruction, you're going to say there were over 7,000 deaths because of Typhoon Haiyan, and that's a social impact. And you're going to try to choose impacts which are both very severe and not so bad. So you can show the difference and actually evaluate correctly. So given that now I've got a sort of plan for my answer, I'm going to write my answer. And on the next slide, there is a sample answer for you that I have written. Before we do that, one thing I want to show you, and you will see it on the next slide, is that you must remember to use peel as well. OK, so structure answer very carefully, make a point, explain it and try and use some evidence from the case study. And at the end, you're going to link back with a small conclusion. 
So on screen now is a sample answer that I have typed up for you. And what I'd like you to do is pause this job pod and actually read this answer. Because this answer is a way in which you can use social and economic impacts and also link them together whilst using Peel. So I'm going to get you to pause now and have a read of this answer as much in detail as you can. OK, so now that you've had a chance to read the answer, let's talk through what I've done with this answer. OK, so remember, the question was to evaluate the impacts. So I've color coded this for you to show you where I've mentioned social impacts, where I've mentioned economic impacts and where I've actually used both of them together. So you can see at the start, what I've done is I've said the impact of Typhoon Haiyan were severe. OK, so I've said very clearly my argument is that they were very bad. I've then said a large social impact was that over 7,000 people died. I've then explained that impact. And I've said the reason for it was because it went straight through the city of Tacloban. I've then brought in another social impact, which was 1.9 million people were made homeless. And then I've said that this had all had consequences for the recovery. And it meant that the impacts were really, really hard. And you can see I've labeled that on the right hand side here, that I'm talking here about severe impacts. So these are very severe ones. I then move on to another peel paragraph and I start to talk about economic impacts. And I've said that 5.8 billion US dollars of infrastructure damage was done. And I've also said that there were 6 million job losses linked to Typhoon Haiyan. I've then said that these are related to long term economic decline and that worsens people's social impacts in terms of quality of life. So there are severe impacts economically that I've mentioned. The second section here, then, I've decided that I want to bring in my less severe impacts. OK, so what I've said here is that actually due to the responses of the aid agencies, because they were able to provide food, water and shelter to some people, if not everyone, this actually reduced the impacts of Typhoon Haiyan overall. And it meant that people were able to recover over time. So it meant that it stopped more and more people going into poverty and it stopped people being homeless for 10 or 20 years and therefore that reduces the impacts and therefore these impacts are determined as less severe. And then at the end, to end my peel paragraphs, I've said overall the social and economic impacts of Typhoon Haiyan were severe. So that is a roundup of how I have used social and economic impacts in my answer as well as using peel throughout the answer and as well as evaluating them to say, well, this one is severe and this one isn't as severe. And finally, just to end this jog pod on SEEP, some takeaway points. I've got five key things for you to remember here. Number one, when you're memorizing your impacts and responses for any case study, try to memorize them in terms of SEEP. So try to learn two social impacts, two environmental impacts, two economic impacts and two political impacts. Remember to always use SEEP in your practiced appeal paragraphs. OK, so it's not good enough just to list down SEEP impacts. You've got to use them in paragraphs really well. Try to also choose impacts using SEEP that are both big impacts and smaller impacts, just so you can answer evaluate questions the way I have done. One key thing is that you do not need to, in every single exam answer, use one social, one environmental, one economic and one political impact. OK, you choose from the ones that you know and choose a few of them and use them well. For a six mark answer like the one you've just seen, I was not able to use social and economic and environmental and political because it's just simply not enough space or time. So I chose two. If it was an eight mark question, I might choose three. And if it was a 12 mark question, I might try and choose four. And finally, Larger mark questions will require more types of impacts. And that's exactly what I've just said. If it's a 12 mark question in paper three, you're going to try and use as many of the four categories as you can. I hope this session was useful on helping you identify how to use SEEP and helping you try to use SEEP as a technique to try and remember specific facts from case studies.